Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 2020 Genesis G70. My goal for this video is to give you guys a complete point of view walkthrough of the entire car from the engine to the trunk and everything in between. I'll also take it for a thorough drive and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start her up, and let her run. The 2020 G70 is available in nine different colors. This example is finished in Himalayan gray. A smart key access system with push button ignition does come standard on all trim levels. All you have to do is keep the key fob in your pocket and use the little chrome buttons on the driver and passenger side door handle to lock and unlock the vehicle. Now there's a handful of upholstery options across the G70 lineup, including colors, but this one being the sport package has a black Napa leather interior with diamond quilted accents. With the sport package, you also get the option of either gray color accent stitching or red. It's a beautiful interior. The G70 is offered with either a two liter turbocharged four cylinder or a 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6. Of course, I will be covering the four cylinder model here and there, but for the main focus of this video, we're gonna keep it on the V6. Now starting price for a G70 with the four cylinder is $35,450. For the V6, it's $44,650. The G70 with the four cylinder is also offered with a manual transmission. And I'll talk about that in just a second. This car has every single option possible. The Elite package, the Prestige package, and of course the Sport package. Total MSRP for what you see here is $51,245, and that includes destination. To start, all you have to do, make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then just put your foot on the brake and hit the dash mounted button to go. The G70 was first introduced as a 2019 model following the introduction of the Kia Stinger in 2018. For those of you who don't know, the G70 and the Stinger actually share a bunch of stuff. Powertrains, brake setup, wheel setup, and all of that good stuff, but aside from the running gear and platform similarities, the two cars are very different from one another, especially with the interior. Totally different layout, the Genesis, I believe, has more of a German feel to it, I suppose. And just the car in general competes in a slightly different segment. This is supposed to be more BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class, Audi A4. You get the picture. Let's talk about what's underneath the hood. Like I was saying, the G70 is offered with two different engines. The standard setup is a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder that puts out 252 horsepower, unless you opt for the manual and then that gets bumped up to 255 horsepower, as well as 260 pound-feet of torque. However, the V6 is a completely different animal. It's a 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6 that puts out an impressive 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. With the V6, you can expect to hit 60 miles an hour in as little as four and a half seconds. The four-cylinder and V6 share a lot of design similarities. They both use aluminum for the cylinder block and heads, there's double overhead camshafts with four valves per cylinder and dual continuous variable valve timing. You also have direct fuel injection and a compression ratio of 10 to 1. Now let's talk about fuel economy. Genesis recommends the use of premium fuel for both the four cylinder and the V6. 
when talking about rear wheel drive models, the four cylinder is estimated between 22 miles per gallon in the city and 30 miles per gallon on the highway, while for the V6, it's 17 miles per gallon in the city and 26 miles per gallon on the highway. Of course, it depends on how you drive, but in normal day to day use, you can expect around 20 miles per gallon out of the V6. All wheel drive, of course, is going to modify those numbers a little bit. The G70 also comes with a 15.9 gallon fuel tank, and I really like this. So when you open up the door, it actually clicks in place. So you don't have to worry about it coming back or anything like that. And there's a spot to place your fuel cap. Now let's go ahead and see how she sounds. figured it out by now, Genesis is the luxury brand of Hyundai. It's a relatively new thing. There used to actually be a Hyundai Genesis and a Hyundai Genesis Coupe, but that is completely unrelated to the Genesis brand. So at this moment, the G70 is the smallest Genesis that you can buy. It's the first like all new product designed under the Genesis umbrella. You have the Genesis G80, which is the midsize sedan, the Genesis G80 Sport, which is sportier version, and then you have the flagship G90, which I had filmed one like a year or so ago. They actually just came out with a refreshed one for 2020, and oh my gosh, is that thing gorgeous, but I digress. The G70 is a phenomenal car phenomenal car for the money you know there, there's no matter what I say no matter what accolades that the car gets there's still gonna be people out there that think of it as just a homely Hyundai and that is that is not the case whatsoever I'll be honest $51,000 for this is a lot of money it's a lot of money by anybody's measure but if you start comparing the competition like this car, performance-wise, is probably closest to the BMW M340i. They both do 0 to 60 in about the same amount of time. Both are turbocharged, all that good stuff. But, dollar for dollar, if you outfit the BMW like this car is right now, you're looking at between ten dollars to $15,000 more for the BMW. To some, that doesn't matter. They're going to pay it regardless, but it just goes to show what a phenomenal value the G70 really is. There's a lot of stuff going for it. It drives fantastic. The suspension is fully independent. You have a McPherson strut design in front and a multi-link setup in the back. This one with the sport package has the electro yeah, electronically controlled adaptive dampers so you can firm them up and all that good stuff. But the chassis setup is so well balanced. There's no excessive body roll or anything like that. This thing is actually still pretty comfortable even in sport mode it's taut but none of the road unpleasantries transfer into the cabin which is not an easy task to overcome and the genesis people definitely did it i mean the steering it's a variable ratio steering system so it doesn't just vary the level of assistance like like the feel and how easy it is to steer it it actually changes the steering ratio based on your speed so it's golly it's just so tight and quick to respond i think 
it only takes a little over two turns to lock, so it's very, very agile. Wow. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is a blast. <laughs> All G70s come standard with an eight-speed electronically controlled automatic transmission as well as a set of steering wheel paddle shifters. However, if you're considering a 2.0-liter turbo with rear-wheel drive, you also have the option of a 6-speed manual transmission, which is a really cool thing to see in today's market. Pricing for a manual transmission G70 is $38,500. Now that's before destination. Unlike the automatic cars, the manual cars don't have any additional trim levels or packages. It comes in one very well-equipped package. You have a lot of nice extra features on the interior, full LED headlamps, all of that good stuff. Nothing too over the top, but you got the essentials. You got upgraded brakes, the 19-inch wheels, a limited slip differential, a sport exhaust, and more. One day I really hope that I can drive the 2.0-liter turbo with the 6-speed manual because for a manufacturer to even offer a manual nowadays is just so strange it seems and that's unfortunate because I love manuals but giving credit where it's due, this 8-speed automatic is a hoot. It's an in-house designed 8-speed, it's not sourced from ZF or anything like that and to be honest I can't tell the difference. It's very quick to respond and shift. It's very smooth and comfort, but when you get into sport mode, the rev matching downshifts come into play. That's second. Right. <laughs> it's got a great sound too. Man, I love this thing. <laughs> One of the features included on the Prestige package is a 360 degree camera system. There's also front and rear parking sensors. So there's your backup camera, top down view. You can also individually select the cameras. You have corner views, various settings. It's pretty nice. Behind the shifter, you have a small dial that allows you to switch between your various drive modes. There's five in total. Just turn the knurled knob left or right. There's Smart, Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Custom. They control things like powertrain response, steering firmness, damper firmness, and if you have all-wheel drive, the torque bias. Custom allows you to individually control the parameters to suit your liking, while Smart is more or less an adaptive mode, so the car sees how you're driving and adjusts things accordingly. There's also an electronic sound enhancement system that augments the engine through the audio system. The note changes depending on which drive mode you're in. You can also manually select how loud you want it. All right, let's try out this launch control system. <laughs> Woo! Like I said, zero to 60 in about four and a half seconds. That is fantastic. It's a little cold outside too. We got a little bit of wheel spin back there, but it hooked up pretty good. This has a mechanical limited slip differential out back, so if it detects or senses any slippage back there, it's going to automatically do its thing to make sure the torque goes where it needs to, so you have traction and can just keep on going. Like I said, manual transmission cars come in one very well-equipped trim level, but with automatic cars, you have three additional option packages on top of the standard equipment. They include the Elite, the Prestige, and the Sport. Now, the base model V6 does come with a slightly higher level of standard equipment than a base four-cylinder, but depending on the option package you choose, you can spec them out almost identical to one another. For example, on the entry-level four-cylinder, you have leatherette upholstery, but if you step it up to the Elite package, you can upgrade to full leather. Full leather comes standard on the entry-level V6, but as you go up the trim levels, for example, with the Prestige package, you get beautiful Napa leather with diamond quilted accents on the seats and the door panels. The leather is offered in black, brown, or gray, but if you get the Sport package, black is your only option because you have all of this color accent stitching. Again, available in gray or red. I'm partial to the red because it just looks awesome. There's a ton of soft stitched padded material everywhere throughout the interior. 
all accented in the red stitching. The doors, dash, center console, they did a phenomenal job with this thing. Like I said earlier, the build quality honestly feels very German. The interior is quiet, the doors close with a nice soft thud, lots of satin chrome detailing, some brushed aluminum trim here and there, and of course these awesome stainless steel speaker grills. Both front seats are fully powered. The driver's seat gets some more power adjustments. You have a power thigh extension as well as power adjusting side bolsters in addition to all of your standard adjustments and four-way power lumbar. They're very comfortable overall and offer a lot of support, especially across the sides. That satin chrome detailing at the top is a nice touch. Heated front seats are standard, but with the Elite package you also get ventilated seats and a heated steering wheel. If you go up to the Prestige package, you also get heated rear seats. Here's something else that's pretty cool. Let's say you have somebody sitting behind the passenger seat and they'd like a little bit of extra leg room and you don't have somebody sitting up front. Like you're a chauffeur in somebody. There's actually two buttons right here. One to slide the seat forward and the other one to tip the backrest forward. So you can put this thing up all the way and create a lot more leg room. Yeah, that's actually really nice, especially considering that there's not a whole lot of room back here to begin with. I have the seat over there set to where I normally sit. I'm five foot 10 and you can see just how little leg space there is, but I'll hop over there in just a second. Well, since we're here already, let's talk about the back seat. Again, I'm five foot 10. If I put my head all the way back, I only have about a half inch or so of extra head space. Now let's attempt this side. Ought to be interesting. Oh, no, 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 that's not gonna work too well. <laughs> I fit, not great, but I do fit. Honestly, I'd probably start to get claustrophobic after a while if I had to sit here for a long period of time because my legs, my feet are literally trapped underneath the seat. <laughs> I can't move around a whole lot. <laughs> there is cutouts right here for some extra leg clearance, but if you're a taller person, you probably don't want to sit back in the G70 for a while. However, it still is a very nice place to be. You have three adjustable headrests, a fold down armrest with two cup holders and a 12 volt power outlet in the bottom of the center console which also has air vents so everybody can be climate controlled. The tops of the B pillars have little coat hooks and there's LED reading lights up in the roof. A wide sunroof is standard on the V6 but with the prestige package you also get a microfiber suede headliner that comes down all three pillars, it wraps the visors and it goes across the rear parcel shelf. From the driver's seat, everything has a horizontal theme. The dashboard and the stitched padding runs all the way across. You have a little piece that extends down towards the center console, which I really like. It's a driver-focused console. Everything is tilted a little bit this way. Up top, you have a floating display for the infotainment system. It's either a seven inch or an eight inch display. This one has the eight inch display with navigation. The steering wheel is of course wrapped in leather. It's power tilt and telescope, perforated leather across the sides with the accent stitching, some satin chrome detailing, and big grip bolsters at 2 and 10. Across the middle, you have your multifunction controls. On the left side, hands-free telephone, voice commands, and radio controls. The right side, cruise control, adaptive cruise, and driver's information system. The driver's information system can be found in the big digital display in between the Speedo and TAC. There's a lot of stuff built in like performance gauges, a lap timer, G-force meter, which drive mode you're in, fuel economy, other trip data, digital speed readout, navigation, some of your driver assist systems, tire pressure, and all of the user settings. So there's a ton of personalizable things in here, including an auto recall system for the steering wheel and seat. So when you turn the car off, the steering wheel goes up, the seat moves back, vice versa when you turn it back on, just to make ingress and egress a bit easier. 
As far as audio, this one's equipped with a 15-speaker Lexicon surround sound system that has two subwoofers that sit underneath the front seats. I think the total wattage is somewhere north of 700. It's very powerful, very crisp, and clear. The infotainment system is awesome. It's very easy to use. This is your home screen. You get a snapshot of navigation, media, some shortcuts down below. This is your main menu. You got driving information, hands-free telephone, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and pretty much every media option you can ask for out of a car nowadays. The only thing that I could complain about, and it's not really a complaint, it's honestly quite stupid, this is pretty much the same infotainment setup as you would find in any regular Hyundai or Kia product. It doesn't give off like a premium user experience like you would expect to find out of a BMW iDrive interface or the Mercedes Command interface. This does everything you could ever realistically want it to do. It just doesn't have, it doesn't give off the experience of a premium brand. So in the future, it would be nice to see Genesis come up with their own version of this that still has the functionality but kind of fits the character and, and class of the car, so to speak. Continuing down the center stack beneath the center air vents, you have a bunch of controls laid out, shortcuts for the infotainment system, and some radio controls. Right beneath that is your electronic dual zone automatic climate control system, which is standard across the board. It's also where you can access your heated and ventilated front seats, heated steering wheel, you can change your zones, fan speed in the middle, temperature to the outer sides, and there's little toggles in the very bottom for front and rear defrost. Beneath that, is a storage cubby. You can push this door out of the way and it reveals some media inputs. So 12 volt power outlet, auxiliary input, as well as a USB port. On the right side, this one has the optional wireless phone charging pad, but unfortunately it's kind of limited to the size of phone that you could put in there. I have an, an iPhone XS Max and with a case, it does not fit whatsoever. Across the center console, you have two generous cup holders and a large amount of storage. Just flip this up, the compartment's all lined in felt, and there's a power outlet up front. As far as storage, you have decent door pockets, of course, the console space, and a wide glove box that is lockable. You'll notice when you open it, it's damped, so it opens up nice and slow, and it's all lined in felt and features LED illumination. As far as safety, the G70 is packed with a ton of active and passive systems. There's seven airbags located throughout the interior, including a driver's knee airbag and a ton of driver assistance technologies. Things like forward collision avoidance with pedestrian detection, blind spot collision warning, lane keep assist, driver attention warning, smart cruise control, and more. So before I wrap this video up, let's talk about trunk space. If you opt for the Prestige package, you get a fully powered trunk lid, which is pretty nice. Just hold down the button on the remote, and it does the rest. The other thing too, as long as you have the key fob on you, when you walk up to the car and your arms are full, instead of having to try to fiddle with the key fob or the button on the trunk, it'll detect you and open the trunk automatically. The G70 has 10.5 cubic feet worth of trunk space, which isn't large by any means, it's somewhat average. If trunk space is more of a priority, you might want to consider the Kia Stinger, because of its hatch design, it's significantly larger. If I remember correctly, it's just north of 23 cubic feet in total. There's a cargo net and tie downs for securing smaller items, and another little net off to the right. If you needed to stow some longer items, the back seats fold down. It's a 60-40 split design. I've said it once before and I'll say it again, this car is phenomenal. If you are searching for something in this segment, whether it be a BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, Mercedes C-Class, or even an Alfa Romeo Giulia, you are doing yourself a disservice if you don't give this car a test drive and do some in-depth comparisons because it is really fun to drive. It's very comfortable. Actually, when you first climb in, the bolsters automatically hug you once you sit into the seat. And when you turn the car off and get out, they relax to make it easier to get out. I mean, it's just little things like that. There's so much value in this car 
and the price structure, the way Genesis has done everything is very Hyundai-like in the fact that it's simple. Things are grouped into just a very small number of packages to make building your car a no-brainer. Plus, there's a lot of other benefits that Genesis is offering with you know new vehicle purchases, like three years complimentary maintenance. They'll come out and pick up your vehicle for free and give you a loaner. Uh, it's Genesis connected services for like a number of years, like just a lot of benefits. So anyway, I'm done rambling. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This has been a fantastic experience. I've had a blast with this car, and uh, I'm very, very much looking forward to hopefully testing out a new G90 at some point, but to see how the Genesis brand is going to evolve over time. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so because there is a lot more content where that came from, not just with car reviews, but projects as well. Make sure that little notification bell is selected, and of course, leave a like below. It really helps the video out, video out a lot. <laughs> See you guys on the next one. Take care.